Welcome back to Panker Ranch Garage. We've got this Bridgeport Series 1 with a 2 horsepower variable speed head on it. The head started making tons of noise, uh, slowly getting worse over time. I finally decided to tear it apart and get it fixed up. So stay tuned, see what I found, how we fixed it. So when we disengage everything from the variable speed drive downwards, it still makes a hell of a racket, which makes me believe that there's nothing wrong with the spindle bearings. There's nothing wrong with your two-speed, uh, you know, bull gear setup here. And it makes me think it's all up in this upper half, which ideally is where I want the problem to be because I think it's easiest to service. Um, but you can hear a lot of things going on in there. Something's rattling, something's rubbing, and recently I've had where I'm changing speeds, I feel like the belt started to slip, like the pulleys weren't moving like they should or something like that, so. Reverse, it sounds just about the same, just as bad. Something is definitely crackling on inside here. Anyway, let's get this apart and see what the deal is. All right, so before I shut this off, I ran the speed all the way down to the slowest speed, which means that it compressed this pulley the most, which should pull the belt into the back pulley as far as possible. And what I'm looking to do is if you look carefully, there's holes in the bottom of the pulley here. And there's also, well, this is like a retainer. And there's holes up there in the bottom of the pulley. If I could get a bolt to come through and grab those, I could probably um, save me some hassle in getting this motor out. Ooh. Just makes it. Uh, don't. If you've ever released the clutch on like a side-by-side -side before, or maybe a snowmobile, this will make sense. If not, this will make sense once I get it out of here, what we're doing. All right, so I think I figured out the technique here. One is once you catch your motor bolts and you squeeze that pulley apart, you want to do the same with this one. You want this one to come apart to give you as much belt slack in the back as you can. This, the chain just went slack. The pulley didn't want to move, so I spun this and, and just tapped the belt into the pulley over and over and over again as I spin it with a little punch. Finally, she spread apart. So there's an issue up here, and that might be part of what we're getting into. And then the technique to get the motor out is to wiggle it forward and actually put the top side of the pulley above the housing, the bottom side below the housing. Pull this thing all the way forward into the crotch here. Then you can carefully reach in with your finger or a screwdriver and flick the belt off the back. And then I think I'm ready to pull this thing off. Taking off this top plate now, like a lot of things on this bridge port, you can reuse the fasteners as little pullers or jack screws. This thing might be in there pretty good. I think this is an upper bearing plate or something. Take the the fork off, tilt plate, whatever. So it looks like a clutch fork down in here, right? You see where the Allen is and those two bolts? That fork can stay in this cover as one whole assembly here, and then we can look at it on the bench, but we have to disconnect it from that top pulley plate. Uh, so that's what we're doing with these two screws. And then back here, I always wondered what this screw was. It's like a, a set screw or a jacking screw with a lock nut. It looks to me like that's how you would maybe calibrate your speed here. Uh, you know, the Bridgeport tells you you're doing 600 RPMs. You could tune that screw to bring the belt to where it actually runs at 600. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Maybe we'll do that um, after putting this back together. I have a really cool trick for that. Right. We're into the sauce now. There she goes. Uh, 
so far I have two bearings that I'm wildly unhappy with. And that is not cool. All right, so the body count is getting higher. So this is that top bearing, the first one we took out. Not terrible, but not great either. This one, the worst I've ever heard. That thing is walloped. And then the bearing up behind this pleat here. So this is, this is your brake drum, which is the bottom side of your front pulley. This thing's got a little bit of pitting in it as well. So I'd like to get this assembly apart, replace that bearing. And then over here is your brake shoes, right? Literally just works like a car or a tractor to slow this thing down. Um, one of the springs is broken, I noticed, and just dangling around in there. So that was making noise. So I need a new brake spring. Well, here we are, another Spank Ranch project. Escalating out of control. I had a lot of while I was in here thoughts, and now we're torn all the way down to the quill housing. Uh, I had a little tight spot on this quill all the way up, and I wanted to investigate, understand why that is. And I believe it's this part was causing it. This is the quill skirt. And inside this skirt, there is some grittiness and some galling and some crap going on in here. And that basically rides up and down within the quill bore for the last, or I believe the first like two inches of stroke or so. So I'm going to clean up and inspect this part, see if I can save it. If not, I will order a replacement one of these as well. But I oiled up the quill and she's buttery smooth all the way now with that part removed. So that was the issue. It's just a matter of fixing that now. Rough first coat on here. <clears throat> a lot of things to trim around. I gotta cut a brush, get a little you know, resolution on her, but that's good. It'll match the rest of the machine. The rest of the, <clears throat> the rest of the machine's real dirty right now, but at least this will finally match. It'll look like it belongs. I actually have a lot to paint. You know, every little cover that comes off of this has to be painted. You can see the shade difference there. I got to paint the motor. I got to paint the upper and lower belt housings. Um, quite a bit of that green crap here. So whatever, sucks doing it now, but it'll be worth it in the end. Got the quill moving nice and smooth, feels like new. Kind of glad I took a little extra time to dig into that and get all that figured out. End up putting a new spring in the quill return here. So I tried to repair the old one, ended up just not being worth it. Here's the parts I ordered. New cog belt, made in USA of course. Some new mobile grease, because we've got a lot of old grease to scrape out of here. This is that bull gear housing I showed you before that was absolutely filled with grease. Got that most of the way cleaned out. It doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, we're gonna pack an entire, another tube of grease in there. So anyway, these are ready for paint. Another thing to mention while you're in here, so you've got this set screw here. This set screw is a grease port right here that runs to the inside of this and greases this. So if you're taking this apart to paint it, pull that out, push all the old grease out. I couldn't believe how hard the grease was that was in there. So if I wanted to grease this, I probably couldn't even make it happen. So I push that out, we'll get fresh grease in there. And then for your lower spindle bearing, I believe it is, there's an oil cup on that. Go ahead, take that out, blow it out, shoot a straw through here, make sure that this port is clean. That way that drips oil into your bearing. This was totally clogged as well. So I've been oiling this machine and the oil wasn't even making it to the bearings. Pretty drama free, that's what you want. Beautiful. Now we're down to just this pulley and you can see in here, it's got like a special key. So it's a key with plastic sides on it. And then you have these bushings, these plastic bushings that are within the bore of the pulley. And it's critical that these are like pretty tight to the motor shaft 
You need, but you need it to slide, so it can't be super tight, but you don't want it to wobble either. You guys see that? I think this slop is a lot of my noise, and what I believe is happening is you have a belt running through here like this, right? Say you're at medium speed like this. As this belt comes around, this pulley is rocking back and forth, right? So it's spread on the side with the belt, and then it's collapsed on the side opposing the belt, and that's happening at 3,600 RPMs or 1,800 RPMs where this motor spins, and you just have all that knocking going around. Another thing to consider is that my old belt is barely an inch and a quarter thick, and a new belt is a smidge over an inch and a half thick. The other thing is that this belt is worn in such a way that it changes in thickness around the belt. So you're a little under an inch and a quarter there, you might be a little actually over an inch and a quarter here, which even adds more to that pulley rocking back and forth. Cause this thing, as this thing's passing by, as this thickness is changing, it's wedging those pulleys apart and shaking the crap out of everything. So you buy the bushing kit from H and W machine repair, right? I recommend these guys for everything. They've really got this Bridgeport stuff nailed. But anyway, they provide you mandrels with the bushing. So this is a split bushing, presses into the pulley, you have the keyway going through the gap, and then you epoxy it in. And then this mandrel basically sets your inner diameter. So if you didn't have this and you push them in there, and the epoxy cures and shrinks a little bit, or you got a tight spot, whatever, this isn't gonna glide on your motor shaft like it needs to. So basically you'll clean out the old bushings, glue these in, jam the mandrel in that way as the epoxy cures this thing's got the perfect inside diameter to travel up and down this motor shaft without having a ton of play or being really tight so i'm not going to go into detail with that h and w has a really nice video on youtube of how to do this uh, so just go ahead and watch that if you're looking to do that anyway so it's the next day and the bushing job came out awesome so look how nice and smooth this rides on the motor shaft there is no play. So you go. So that upper pulley bearing, that's the one that was causing a lot of that noise. So we got a new guy here. We're gonna do this brake drum bearing too. Low gear, neutral, high gear. See, that fits great as well. And it moves super smooth, yet there's absolutely no play in it. Okay, the parts pile is getting pretty small. I guess it's time to put the motor on and then get the belt routed. And then we're gonna fire this thing up and see if she's fixed. Now, I got some touch-up paint I gotta deal with. I gotta paint this thing still. And then the whole head is loose. And that is recommended to leave it that way until we start it up and then snug them down uh, once kind of everything aligns itself. That way that nothing's bind up, bound up. All right, big moment here. I'm gonna start this thing up and we're gonna see what happens. <laughs> Sounds a little noisy up front, honestly. Um, let's gauge that. A 
I want to get into high gear. There we go. Okay. centered the chain on this. This is low speed here and it's going the wrong way. So it says I'm going, you know, 3,000 to 3,600, 3,900, but you can hear it's slowing down. So I have this backwards. Let me pull this apart and fix that. There you go. RPMs right there. quieter as I tighten things up, which is awesome. This might not be exciting to a lot of people, but to me, this is extremely exciting. All right. This thing has never been this quiet before. Listen to that baby purr. I mean, you can't even hear this thing running at 600, where before it was... So I want to calibrate the speed on this bridge port. You can see here we are at 1000 RPMs, give or take whatever that means. And then I have this phone app, which is a tachometer based on the camera. So pretty interesting uh, little app here. Let's see how it works. All right, so we're running at what we, or what the bridge port indicates as 1000 RPMs. We will set our tack to 1,000 RPMs. And then we watch the chuck key movement on the screen and we adjust the, the speed until that thing slows down and stops. All right, so that's pretty close. 90, it comes back the other way. 80, oops, that's, oh, 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 oh wrong buttons. So 1080, it's going that way. 1090, it's going that way. So you know your speed's between the two. So we're probably spinning about 1085 right now. So let's go make an adjustment up top here on this screw. And then we will recheck our results. Okay, so there it is. She's sitting dead still. That is 1000 RPMs with a 1000 RPM indication up here. Just for fun, we check it in low range at 100 RPMs and it is spot on. So that's pretty cool. All right guys, that wraps up another episode of Spank Ranch Garage. This is not really a job that I wanted to do at this time. I have a lot of other things I'd rather be doing, but when she was knocking and making all that noise, I just couldn't stand to run this machine knowing that I could do more damage to it. So. It kind of forced me to just get in there and get it done. So what I ended up finding was obviously a bad belt, right? This belt is a quarter inch thinner than it's supposed to be. It's also very inconsistent in its thickness and it has a lot of pretty serious cracks. So the belt was shot. Two bad bushings in the motor floating side pulley. And then also three bad bearings in the head of this thing. So. 
there's that. And then finally, there was actually a broken spring in the brake shoe assembly as well. So that is six separate problems I found in the head of this machine, just taking it apart. All of them are rectified now. I replaced both belts. I replaced numerous bearings other than just these. And, you know, new grease, reassembled everything the way I think it should go. She sounds absolutely excellent right now. I mean, listen to that. This thing has never been that quiet before. Uh... really nice but either way all that knocking clanking and carrying on is over with and this machine is going to hopefully be with me for the rest of my life or at least you know until i got to dig into it again in 30 years whatever so just how it goes sometimes you just got to dig in there get things done it gave me an excuse to paint it get it looking decent i, I do have some touch up to do because i got grease all over everything uh reassembling it but at this point this is pretty well as close to a brand new bridge board as i'm ever going to get and it's as close as i'm ever going to need you'll see this machine in plenty of episodes coming up i got a lot of machining work to do and just had to get this out of the way you know get it done move on with life so anyway thanks for watching spank ranch garage i'll see you next time